Yo, it's uh, Buddha again. It's been like four to five months. So, you know, my average upload schedule. Anyway, uh, this video is going to be different than usual. Actually, that's exactly what you should all be expecting at this point. I have basically zero consistency. Anyway, uh, I forced a friend of a friend to come up with uh, discussion topics about philosophy. And we're going to talk about it. This video will consist less of sensual, horny voice, and more of a, you know, casual voice. The main difference being how far away from the mic I am. Anyway, uh, we're just going to talk about uh, philosophy, and uh, of course, I'm sure I don't have to say this since I'm assuming all my audience is functioning adults with the content I upload, but, you know, I never know. Philosophy is something every human being should develop on their own based on their experiences on this strange thing called being alive. That's the end of the scripted bit of this video. The rest of the video should just be me talking to the friend about philosophy. I hope you enjoy it, though. Hello, everyone. Uh, I have my victim here, uh, Redacted. Introduce yourself. So, yeah, uh, redacted uh i've been forced against my will to pick out six uh philosophical questions and uh, we're gonna discuss all right uh 50th take uh done i'm not i'm not taking doing another take fuck that <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh i guess uh let's get down to your fucking discussion question Jeff. all right yeah so um the first question here was uh do you think it's possible to know how the universe is formed? So this is kind of like a, I guess, a metaphysical question. Uh, Basically, like, do, do you, is it possible to know, like, the nature of the universe, you know? Uh, I guess, uh, honestly, I've, I've been thinking about this for a, a good bit, but not too much. So my answer is probably not as uh, flesh out as uh, a lot of people's, but... I don't think it'll be truly possible for us to know how the universe is formed. Like, even if we do theorize the correct way and all that jazz with all the evidence and all that stuff, we'll never have true confirmation and see to know if it's uh, truly how the universe is formed and all that jazz. At least that's in my opinion, of course. Yeah, I uh, I take a similar position. Like, um, I think it's impossible to know the nature of the universe, although, like, we as humans have like a drive to um, discover, uh, I guess, the nature of the universe. I don't think it's really possible. I guess I have more of like an abs absurdist uh, outlook on it. Um, so yeah, uh, is there anything else you want to elaborate on that? Or uh, I, I, honestly, it could we maybe we'll do it in the future, but like it, as far as I I can see. Uh, I don't think technology will ever get to the point where we'll ever be able to truly confirm it, even if we do technically figure it out. But who knows? <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I've kind of, I've kind of, um, I always thought like, uh, I've always thought that even if we were to discover like, um, so, like or prove some sort of theory on like how the universe was formed it's limited to our perceptions too so like we can never like truly know for sure but um no but i i think like we probably won't ever like i, I don't even think it's possible for humans to discover how the universe was formed we kind of just you know we're born one day and we're like an anomaly we're just kind of the speck in the um, in the universe that is exists for some reason, you know, it's, it's kind of a, that's how I think about it. But. That's understandable. Uh, this, this entire conversation better not be, oh yeah, that's understandable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Well, that, that, that first question was a little bit more, uh, I guess, simple. There, there's other ones, uh, that are coming up that, 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 that we can, uh, go a little bit more in depth on and have a more interesting yeah. discussion on. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, the the next one kind of goes into the first one a little bit. Like, uh, I, like basically, it's just: Do you think there's a higher power? Uh, 
<laughs> Obviously, I don't fucking know, but I, that's a boring <laughs> answer. So I guess I'll just say, I don't. I don't have enough evidence to say there is or if there's not, because you can never disprove something's existence based on the lack of evidence. Because, or I guess I guess I should say it. You can never say something exists. I don't know how to say it actually. I can't confirm if anything doesn't exist based off evidence because the universe is too big for me to conclusively say something doesn't exist. However, I will say, as far as I can see, I don't think we'll ever get a higher power correct in terms of religion, all that jazz. I don't think we'll ever be able to know. But as far as I can tell, I don't have enough evidence to believe in the higher power. <laughs> I guess is my best answer to give. Yeah, I mean, that that's fair. Uh, I I take the position that, like, it's kind of like the first one, like, it's impossible for us to know, but I basically, I basically argue that, um, uh, at least, I guess in the traditional sense, if we're going to assume, like, a higher power is good, I'd say there's probably not a higher power, because there's, like, so much suffering and horrible things that happen in the world, and, like, you know, ethically, I think, like, a, a higher power, like, let's say God, for example, would not, like, allow um, this sort of suffering. And and if he did, uh, then he's, like, not a good uh, God, you know? Uh, he's not a good, like, person or whatever. Um, and I, I guess if there was, like, some sort of, I guess, cause for the universe, that's a different one. That goes into, like, the first one. But... In terms of like a higher power, a you know a perfect being, you know I guess the creator of the the world or whatever. I I just I don't know. I I think there's just too much horrible things going on in the world for such a thing to exist. So I I take the um I take the answer that like uh, no, there's just like not a higher power. If I my belief is that if there is a higher power. They don't fucking care about humanity, dude. <laughs> right. Yeah, they they don't. We're like just their minions <laughs> or, or whatever. I don't think they give a shit about the life, death, all that jazz. They, they're they like a fucking kid playing in their fucking bedroom with uh, toy soldiers. <laughs> yeah. uh, I guess uh, next question, because I think that's the end of the, that part of the conversation. Yeah, uh, the next question is a little bit more interesting. It's, uh, do you think there's such a thing as objective morality? So this is like an ethics question. I have to be honest. I thought this was the question I thought about most in this fucking list you gave. Uh, it's hard for me to say because while objective morality, I'm just going to say I don't think there is one. There is objective morality. Because what is good and what is bad really depends on perspective and all that jazz unfortunately so it's hard to say uh, in a, it's impossible to say there is an objective morality an example being unions uh people would say yeah they're great because they fight for uh workers rights and all that jazz but uh, on the perspective of uh, businesses it's bad for business paying employees more bad for business that sort of thing. That's an example I could think of. Maybe not the best one, but it's one I could think of. So my, I guess my answer is that I don't think there's uh, objective morality. And, and uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> is there anything you need to say about that? Yeah, I mean, it's a really tough, like, ethical question because... Um, uh, so... So basically, I think, to my knowledge, most like philosophers argue that objective morality exists, and I think it's because, as an ethical question, it's like, you know, if if there's no objective morality, then like anything goes. Like, there's no like we we have like no I guess objective way of determining uh, ethics, and you know that's a, I understand that argument because it's like, you know, if there's no objective morality, like. Yeah, it's kind of bleak when you look at like how do we make moral decisions, you know. But I think um, 
maybe this is just like the nihilist in me, but like, uh, you know, I, that I, I'm probably more closer to like a moral nihilist. Um, although like I don't like the outcomes of that position, um, or the possible outcomes of that position. But like when I think about it from like a a, a, a metaphysical stance, you know, we can't like determine like like objective moral facts like we can't just like find like you know like a sort of gene or property of a thing and determine like the objective morality of it like we can't do that um so i guess i, I i'm more of like maybe like a moral subjectivist like we just have to determine right and wrong for society to function you know um and you know i'm not entirely satisfied with my position but like i I can't come to the conclusion that there's objective moral facts. Like, I just can't arrive at that, especially as someone who um, studies, like, sociology. Like, a lot of what is moral is just subjectively determined by the society from which uh, individuals are born within. Like, um, you know, if you go to, let's say there's a society that uh, values, like, human sacrifice. Like, yeah, we would look at that and be like, that is hella, hella insane, right? But you know, to that society, that is normal, <laughs> you know, like, it's just like, it's morally good, even, you know, because you're pleasing the gods or whatever. So, um, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm like a moral subjectivist. So like, I, I'd probably say there's like, not as not, not such thing as like, objective morality. Um, and that's a little controversial, but uh, in, in uh, philosophy, I think, but I think it's, it's the one that makes the most sense. Uh, if it's controversial, who cares? We, I set up the standard that uh, people should make their own philosophies in the fucking intro. <laughs> people can think for themselves, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess uh, I, I don't have much else to say for other than, yeah, no, I don't think there is an objective morality. Of course, I do think, I do have my opinions on what I believe is good or bad, but, you know as does everyone and my standards are different than everyone else's and i'm sure everyone else's has their own line i guess and uh that uh, that just kind of uh counters the objective part of the objective morality and yeah that i'm oh, sorry you finish oh no I, I, you go yeah, I was just going to say, it leads into the next question of, like, um, how do we decide what is good and what is evil? Uh, so I don't know if we want to start talking about that, or... Uh, I guess we will. <laughs> I didn't fucking plan this video. <laughs> Very <laughs> yeah. this video uh, what's good and evil? Uh, how I believe how people decide what's good and evil is... Uh, it, de it depends on... It depends on the fucking person, dude. <laughs> because um, each individual has their own uh, personality, thoughts, and experiences, all that jazz. Some people will say what's good and what's evil is uh, what's good for them is uh, good, and what's uh, not good for them is evil. Some will say, oh, what uh, what helps the society, what helps the greater good is good, and uh, what doesn't is uh, evil. Uh, some people, of course, are selfish. You know, some are altruistic. Some don't really fucking care, really. Uh, I don't have much perspective on this, but I don't. It just depends on the person. As far as uh, I, I go, I guess is uh, from what I see, good is a. Uh, I'm more of a what the greater good type person <laughs> but i am quite selfish in other ways as well it, it, it just depends yeah would you say you're like a consequentialist like whatever action produces the um best outcomes is the ethical uh ethical um action would you say you're like a consequentialist kind of person i guess as long as uh as long as less people are hurt by a decision, I guess that's the more that's what I decided is the more good 
option. Gotcha. No, I'm not too. I'm not too uh, in depth with knowledge in uh, philosophy. I'm sure you can tell. <laughs> It's not good, but that makes sense, though. Um, yeah, uh, I guess the only thing I can add, um, it's kind of hard to decide what is good and what is evil. Because again, uh, the, the one thing that's hard about ethics is that like, it's not like science where we can just like discover through our senses like general like facts or just like trends about the world or whatever that makes sense like we we can't really um do that with ethics you know um some people take like the like a a nature approach and they try to just look at what humans think is good and bad like naturally but that has its own issues um because you know looking at nature isn't always the best way to determine facts because, you know, we're complex beings. And, and also there's some things that humans would do naturally that we would be like, that's fucking wrong. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think, I think really it's, it's subjective and we just have to uh, determine uh, what's good and what's evil as a society. And as, and it's because like, you know, since society is so complex since we uh since you know human there's so many people um you know we have to kind of create like this social contract for for people to live in a society or else it just falls apart um so again i i'm it's something i have to think about more i'm not like entirely satisfied but like yeah that's basically we just have to um think about ways uh, of and methods of determining what is good and what is evil and usually for me it's more so consequentialism um though i'd probably consider myself uh, a pluralist consequentialist and what that basically is is like usually like consequentialist um will have like w like a way of determining like what is good uh, like a utilitarian would say whatever produces or whatever action produces the most general happiness there's other things for me that are important, like knowledge and stuff. So um, I probably consider myself some sort of pluralist, like consequentialist. And that's just how we have to determine what is good and what is evil, if that makes sense. And this is why, audience, that I uh, forced this person to come on. I don't know what 90% of what they said means, but I'm sure you guys do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess uh, yeah, <laughs> most of it I, 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 I think I understand, but... <laughs> uh, Sorry, no. if I go off a while, it's just because uh, no, no, I'm a I'm nerd. Sure and... The audience will fucking love that shit. <laughs> <laughs> my my audience doesn't exactly have the highest standards uh, <laughs> with my YouTube fucking my YouTube channel. <laughs> All right. Um. Next I question. I guess. Are we so. ready for? I guess so. All right. This is the next two are like my favorite questions. Because I love existentialist philosophy. I'm sure my answers will be just as disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> no, your answers haven't been like that bad. Um, oh, so they've been bad. <laughs> no, right. they're not that bad. Um, yeah, the question is, uh, what is the meaning of life? Very general, but it's you can go very in depth with this. Again, as as most of my answers have been. It kind of depends on the fucking person, dude. <laughs> because uh, for me personally, I guess there's uh, I I just want to fucking enjoy life, dude. That's my meaning. <laughs> I have a brain empty, no thoughts. Uh, just let me fucking enjoy my time on this uh, fucking planet before I uh, get obliterated by a fucking rock. <laughs> uh, that's 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 my thought process. Of course, uh, people want to. Uh, People have uh, very m different meanings, uh, beliefs on what the meaning of life is. Some people value their uh, work ethic, their fucking job, being useful to society, all that jazz. Some people just, some people are fucked up and like to murder people and think that's the point of their life. I don't know. Either way. Uh, for me, personally, I just want to enjoy my life as much as I can before I, uh, get brought, brought back into the fucking rock. <laughs> <laughs> so would you say, like, for you, it's, like, uh, uh, like, doing things that make you personally happy? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. 
though it's <laughs> not exactly an in-depth answer, but I'm not exactly the in-depth person, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, um, no, that's a that's a fair answer. I think uh, so. I don't have like a ton of, um, I like I only have like uh, two years of studying philosophy, but I think that sounds like uh, similar to like an egoist position, which that sounds bad, but it's not bad. Egoism doesn't mean like you're a terrible, selfish person. <laughs> oh, don't, but, don't worry, I am um, a terrible, selfish person. <laughs> yeah, but um. Yeah, so uh, no, that's a that's a fair position. Yeah, my position is actually that there's that it's a, it's impossible to find such meaning. This is because I'm like a I'm very much a fan of Camus, uh, who was an absurdist philosopher, um, and I'm just gonna explain that for the audience. Uh, basically, um, humans have a desire to find uh, meaning in life, but it, it's impossible for us to find meaning. So a lot of times that kind of causes like us to uh, realize what um, Camus called the absurd, you know, the absurdity of life. Um, and once we encounter this phenomenon, it's like, it's kind of depressing. It's demoralizing. It feels horrible because you're like, well, what's the point? You know, what's the point of living? Um, so, you know, the solution uh, in my opinion, is to, once you recognize the absurd, you kind of just accept it and you just, you just, you, you kind of just live life. You, you, you live in spite of the absurd. You rebel, you know, you basically rebel against um, the universe. So, um, yeah, uh, I think, I think for me, there's like no inherent meaning of life. Um, and for me, I know for a lot of people that's kind of depressing, but for me that's almost sort of freeing because it's like, okay, like I don't have to like live uh, for God or or uh, live for a specific thing. I can just like live my life personally how I want to live it. Um, so for me it's freeing, but it is kind of depressing for some people because I think a lot of people – Especially in America, you know, we're we're kind of a Christian nation. Uh, people get kind of depressed when they <laughs> realize that there's no being or that it's impossible to discover any higher power. But that's my long-winded answer. If that makes sense. And that's why, audience, again, I uh, forced this person into a basement and uh, put a mic to their face and <laughs> come into to, to talk about this. But I hope that wasn't too boring. I hope my answer was kind oh, of. Uh, no, no. Interesting. First of all, my audience should expect w bad content first off. So even if, <laughs> okay. bad, even if it is boring to them, they shouldn't be expecting much. And second of all, <laughs> I'm interested in it, and I don't fucking care if they think it's interesting or not. My videos get like three videos a day, th three videos at most a day, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, most of the time they quit after like uh, five, three minutes in at most. <laughs> Hell, I'm pretty sure like zero people will actually watch it to this far. We're at 2022 20, minutes at this point. <laughs> All right, uh, I think we got one more question. Yeah. Right. Um, this is my absolute favorite. Um, how do we find purpose in life? Ooh, I, I just, this is gonna be. Uh, it's I'm like a fucking uh, a record that that's being scratched every single time and repeating over and over again. Uh, it depends <laughs> on the fucking person. <laughs> uh, sometimes people work very hard to find their own purpose in life. Sometimes life just throws a fucking rock at someone and says, that's your fucking purpose. <laughs> now get over it. Um, it just depends. Some depends on uh, person by person. And uh, I guess for you, it'd be like, I guess the question I'd be interested in is like, what does it, what is the... Uh, how do you find the purpose in life? How do I personally? Yeah. Oh, dude, I have no fucking idea. I, I don't know my <laughs> purpose in life. Other than that. Yeah, I kind of I, I kind of feel good doing uh, what I want to do. Yeah, why not? Uh, yeah, no. This video is very disorganized, I, I, and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no. I don't, I don't know my own. I barely know my own purpose in life, except that. I'm a hedonist, I think, is the right word. 
Okay. Right. Yeah, there's also a, a philosophical tradition of hedonism. So, <laughs> maybe. Ooh, maybe. you're not alone. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure I'm not exactly the most uh, nuanced person for this discussion, but I do find philosophy interesting. Either way, uh, perp- how do we find purpose of life? It just depends on the person. Is my final answer. <laughs> Yeah, I guess if we want to run down with the hedonism thing, like, it doesn't mean, like, uh, it, it, like being a hedonist doesn't mean, like, you know, you're you're an evil person, or, or, okay. although it sounds kind of bad. Like, a lot of people say, I'm a hedonist, and I, you know, I feel good when I, you know, uh, do things I like doing, and part of that is, like, helping people, <laughs> you know? Okay. So you could uh, help I'm, others I'm evil, because it makes because you feel I'm good. Hedonist. I, I'm evil, but I'm not not because I'm a hedonist. I'm just evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, like, there's some interesting things you can, like, interesting roads you can go down uh, in regards to like certain like philosophical positions. Um, I guess it's my turn. Give my answer. Yes. Um, <laughs> That's why you're here. <laughs> how do we find purpose in life? Uh, well, I kind of described before. Like, there's no like objective meaning. Um, like, it's kind of impossible for us to find, like, meaning in life. Um, but for me, uh, uh, the, the way I find my purpose is, you know, there's things that I care about that make me feel good. There's goals I want to attain. Um, and, uh, I try to do, uh, things that, you know, further those goals so I can feel like I've accomplish something and you know uh, my short life you know um so basically uh for me it can be like political for example if i want to achieve a political end uh, i join like an org and we work towards that end or it could be like if i want to help people um i can volunteer at uh you know a, a local like volunteer group uh, or i can just do things that just make me feel good uh sounds kind of selfish but uh i do very much care about uh others uh i know like i'm a very like political person so um i've you know i've encountered people that maybe have like grown up in uh, very poor circumstances and like you know that's that makes me feel bad because i know these people don't deserve it so like i i've joined a few like local orgs uh so I could, uh, you know, further my, I guess, uh, political goals uh, further, you know? So that's kind of how I just think of, like, finding purpose in life. Like, since there's no inherent meaning, um, there's no inherent purpose, we kind of have to forge our own path towards such purpose, you know? Um, so that's that's basically my answer. You kind of have to create your own purpose. Because if you don't, uh, your life is going to be very rough. <laughs> so it's kind of like pick your poison. Uh, you know, do you want to just forge your own path, or do you just like want to wallow in your self pity? Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's my answer. And this why this my audience is why I locked up, redacted into my sex dungeon to record this video. <laughs> Because he knows a bit more about philosophy than I do. Um, yeah, I guess uh, we we have three more minutes until the 30-minute mark, like we originally planned. So let's get into politics. No, I'm kidding. Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck that. <man. laughs> uh, uh, if we went into politics, I'd have a lot to say. <laughs> uh, most of my politic- political views is, uh, yeah, that's kind of fucked up, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm I, a, I don't have a very nuanced uh, opinion about politics, other than, yeah, I don't like it. It's uh, not fun. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely not fun. Uh, um, I may as well say it. I'm a Marxist, so it's <laughs> it's want, not fun for me. You want to fucking describe um, it? You know what? We have we have three minutes. I'm sure you can describe it in three minutes. Uh, yeah, so I, I bet I'm going to piss off a lot of the socialists because I don't have, like, a very complete view of Marxism. It, my understanding basically comes from uh, what I've learned in, in sociology through, like, conflict theory because uh, for, you know, 
um, for the audience, like, uh, if you don't know, Karl Marx is like uh, one of the, he's basically the granddaddy of sociology, in my opinion. Um, so uh, basically, uh, I think of Marxism as like an analysis of, uh, of the world. Um, basically, humanity, we go through stages of economic development. Uh, so, you know, uh, first was like primitive communism, like feudalism. Um, now we're in capitalism. We're in like this economic stage of the history of humanity. Um, and the next stage is uh, socialism or communism or whatever term you want to use. Um, okay. And basically, uh, uh, furthermore, it's like a critique of capitalism, largely. Um, so... Uh, that's kind of how I think about it. It's just an analysis of uh, uh, the economic development of humanity. Uh, and the goal is to uh, overthrow uh, capitalism, um, whether that is through uh, democratic means or revolution or a combination of the two. Um, that's for all of the Marxist thinkers <laughs> to debate and argue over. But in its pure form, I just view it as like an analysis of, uh, of the human development. Uh, I'm going to be real with you. Like three people are going to be watching till the end of the video. So don't worry about <laughs> this three people off. <laughs> <That's laughs> also, we passed the 30-minute mark, uh, so we can end the video whenever. But before I land, I guess I'll give my perspective since I forced you to give yours. Uh, so I don't, I don't know much, so I'm just going to say uh, why I think... Uh, because a lot of people will say, oh, communists always has failed throughout all of history, all that jazz. And I guess I will comment on that bit. Uh, the reason I think communists, communism has uh, failed in the past is not because the system is inherently wrong, in my opinion. It's just that I don't think technology was at the point where it could uh, work. And uh, that's it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think that's actually a very like valid point. Um, like, uh, I know a lot of people, you've probably seen those infographics about like the USSR and China, like 100 billion dead, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, a lot of those deaths were due to rapid industrialization. Um, and we, we've seen this in other countries where like a country rapidly industrializes, like there's a lot of pain and suffering. It's just when you take a country, like let's say the United States or the United Kingdom, you know, they were much more, uh, economically developed when they started industrializing. And you look at like Russia, when the USSR was formed, uh, they were largely like agrarian, like they were not industrialized. Same with China. They were not you know, very, like, industrialized. Uh, so, um, you know, there was going, like, if you were going to rapidly industrialize, there was going to be a lot of uh, suffering and, and death or whatever. And that could be a debate, like, how do you industrialize, you know, like, what, what kind of, like, how do you approach that goal with uh, minimizing suffering? But, like, the main point is that, um, although in, like, I'm not sure, so much sure about Mao, although I know for sure about Stalin, although there was a lot of targeted, um, you know, uh, targeted uh, killings and stuff, um, which were very bad, obviously. Um, you know, a lot of people want to compare, like, the USSR to, like, Nazi Germany, for example, and they're just not the same. Uh, like, Nazi Germany, obviously, they, like, just targeted... Uh, Minority groups, like, their whole ideology was built on, you know, destroying the enemy, you know. I've seen, In other words, killing innocent people. Um, I have seen while... many people call Nazi Germany communist, and that just saddens me. Yeah, th that, that doesn't make sense, because Nazi Germany was, like, far right, you know, it's fascist. Nazi they Nazi had, was they so had against socialist communism. in their name, like, the, the party was, like, National Socialism, but that was, like... It, that was basically used as, like, a name uh, for attracting people <laughs> to the party. Like, it has nothing to do with, like, socialism or, or Marxism. Um, like and, Germany. like, the USSR, like, a lot of the deaths under the USSR were were not, like, targeted. Uh, they were not, like, like, a, a, like most of the deaths 
that occurred under Stalin's regime, uh, in my opinion, were not targeted killings. There was a lot of targeted killings, which is why like Stalin is a very controversial figure, obviously. But um, it's it's not the same like with you know <laughs> Nazi Germany because like you know Nazi Germany was just like their whole ideology is about mass murdering and and uh, and genocide. So. <laughs> Like, it's just, like, not comparable. I think um, the main problem was uh, extreme in the extremism cause being really, you know, not good. <laughs> um, I don't fucking know where to go from here. I guess we end the video. We're at the 34-minute mark. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, no, but that was, that was a good conversation. That was a pretty good conversation, I will say. I hope the OBS actually got the fucking thing. Like, I tested it. And they should, but I I, I know how technology <laughs> goes. I guess we'll uh, we'll figure out. If it doesn't, I'm just gonna upload the intro, and uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess I'll stop recording here.